Today's story is unbelievable. You would never believe that a Filipino would betray his country. And for what? For his own personal gain. But how did he do it? What did he do exactly that betrayed his country? And the worst part is he was not even a, an average Filipino. He was a Filipino politician who people put their full trust in him to improve the country and their livelihoods. But in the end, he betrayed them. Fidel Ramos, fondly called FVR, was the 12th president of the Philippines from 1992 to 1998. His time in office came as the country was recovering from the challenging years of martial law and economic difficulties. During his presidency, the Philippines saw significant economic improvements, a revival of democracy, and a strengthened national identity. But like any leader in the past, Ramos's time in office wasn't free from controversy especially regarding the sale of Filipino properties. Before we get into the details of how he sold the country and betrayed his people, let's look at his achievements. Let's look at the positive sides, what he has done to improve the livelihoods of average Filipinos. He launched a big development plan called Philippines 2000. This plan involved privatizing and deregulating key industries like electricity, telecommunications, banking, domestic shipping, airlines, and oil. The tax system was updated, and the country's external debt was made more manageable through debt restructuring and careful financial management. By 1996, the inflation rate had fallen to 5.9% from a high of 9.1% in 1995. By late 1990s, the Philippines' economic growth was being favorably compared to other Asian countries like Taiwan, Thailand, South Korea, and Malaysia. During his presidency, Ramos started economic reforms to open up the previously closed national economy, encourage private businesses, attract more foreign and local investments, and fight corruption. He was also known as the most travel Philippine president, making many trips abroad and bringing about $20 billion in foreign investment to the Philippines. To boost the country's financial outlook, he hosted the 4th Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Leaders Summit in the Philippines in November 1996. He also made changes to the tax system, including the increased value-added tax, or VAT, from 4% to 10%, as required by the World Bank and International Monetary Fund. While Ramos's intention of reviving the economy and improving the livelihood of Filipinos, the way he's done it has actually affected the economy of the Philippines negatively, and many Filipinos suffered as a result. While he was president, many state-owned assets were sold to private companies to boost the economy, bring in foreign investment, and ease the government's financial load. However, the way these sales were handled and the reasons behind them have been widely questioned. Critics say that many of these properties were sold for much less than they were worth, causing the country to lose lots of money. These sales involved some of the most valuable and important properties in the Philippines, ranging from prime land in Manila to large areas of land in rural areas. The sheer scale of these sales was unlike anything seen before in the Philippine history, leading to questions about the real reasons behind them, who was involved, and how they affected the Philippines and its people. Although his intentions might have seemed benign, and he wanted to help the country, but underneath the surface, he wanted to benefit himself. Ramos became president in 1992 during a time of huge changes as the Philippines was trying to rebuild after the challenging Marcos dictatorship. A former military leader turned statesman, Ramos promised a new era of progress and prosperity. His presidency brought major changes such as opening up the economy to foreign investments and boosting tourism. 
He also focused on building infrastructure, resulting in better roads, bridges, and public buildings. Under his leadership, the economy grew steadily, the GDP rising and inflation decreasing, and also the country's international credit rating improved. Ramos was praised for his economic management, with some calling the Philippines Asia's next economic tiger. Despite these successes, Ramos's presidency also faced controversy, especially over his attempts to solve the country's financial problems by selling government-owned companies. Although this was meant to reduce the nation's debt, it led to intense debate about the protection of national assets and sovereignty. One of the most debated issues was the sale of important properties like Fort Bonifacio, a military site with historical and strategic value. The decision to sell this valuable land caused public outrage, with many worried about national security and how transparent the process was. Another significant controversy was the proposed sale of the Manila Hotel, a symbol of Filipino heritage, to a foreign company. This plan sparked widespread concern about protecting national identity and heritage. Likewise, the sale of the Energy Development Corporation, part of the Philippine National Oil Company and crucial to the energy sector, raised doubts about the wisdom of giving up control of such an important resource. It's worth noting that although it's a good thing that private companies handle public institutions because they have the finances, they have the money, they have the capital to invest in projects. But the problem with such an approach is that private companies seek to maximize their profit. So what does that mean? It means even if it affects the public, that doesn't matter. The impact of these sales was significant. These property sales sparked a national debate, with critics accusing the Ramos administration of short-sightedness and lack of transparency. Despite public outcry, many of these sales went ahead, leaving people to deal with the consequences. To this day, the impact of these sales was significant. They brought in a lot of foreign money leading to a construction boom and job creation, but also shifted ownership of important properties from Filipinos to foreign companies. The economic benefits were unevenly spread, with cities thriving while rural areas fell behind, worsening social inequality. And also the environmental impact was serious, with rapid urbanization causing deforestation, pollution, and threats to biodiversity. Culturally, the presence of foreign investors often pushed aside local traditions, leading to a loss of cultural heritage. During his presidency, the Philippines faced widespread power outages known as brownouts for almost a year. This happened because the demand for electricity grew faster than the reliable energy supply. The problem was due to the old and poorly maintained power plants and a lack of investment in the energy sector. After the 1997 Asian financial crisis, the Philippine peso lost half its value, causing the cost of the contracted electricity to double in local terms. As a result, electricity prices in the Philippines became the second highest in Asia, just after Japan. Investors already saw the Philippines as risky because of previous coup attempts by military leaders like Gregorio Hanasa during President Aquino's term, which also included frequent brownouts lasting 4 to 12 hours. This political instability and power shortages made it hard to attract investment and modernize the country. Despite all these problems, Ramos's presidency became one of the first to use build operate transfer schemes to boost development since the government had limited money private investors were invited to build and run projects like tollways power plants and railways for a certain period then transfer ownership to the government at the time there was little experience or information about these schemes later changes in exchange rates and the business environment led some to argue that these contracts 
unfairly shifted too much risk onto the government and consumers. <laughs>